when we use the word leader or leadership, what comes to mind? Then our MC suggested some possibilities earlier in the in the program. The military commander, the Wall Street wizard, the political deal maker, the hip hop artist, maybe we should also add the Bollywood superstar. Maybe or maybe not. I'm going to suggest that whatever picture we have of leaders and leadership, the traditional language we apply to it still governs how we conceptualize and think of, of leadership in a language of power, authority, gain, fame, and success. But I think there are dangers when we look at leadership only in, in those terms. Power writ large, the too readily transforms importance to self-importance. I want to suggest that there are other frameworks we can imagine that are not just utilitarian and skills checklists for what leadership is, so that we can have a reality check to provide some truth-telling, even more important, some truth-living as it applies to leadership. How does leadership mean rather than what it means? How does it create meaning? How does it establish healthy relationships? How does it give us lasting values, authentic ways to be human in concert with other humans? other species, and our shared environment. We need for our very survival, I think, to go beyond listing merely pragmatic ideas about leadership and move to principles of personhood. And those are outlined here. Silence, presence, joy, and justice. These principles or qualities are components of an ancient Gaelic, Irish, Celtic way of looking at the world. And the phrase I want to use is an ancient Celtic phrase, anam cara, the soul friend. I'm going to suggest the soul friend as a better model for leadership. The soul friend in ancient Ireland was often a woman a woman who acted as advisor, companion, midwife, a voice of wisdom, and a confessor. A confessor to all of those male monks that those women then sent into Europe to civilize it. You may know the popular book, How the Irish Saved Civilization. I think a better title would be How Irish Women Saved Civilization as guides through the various rites of passage for those that they were um, confessors, chaplains, friends of, to confirm in joy all the stages uh, of life, even aging and death. They led the person at every stage as if through a joyful birth and rebirth. The task of the soul friend to reword Karl Marx for a moment, was not just to describe the world, but to change it. The first of these qualities, silence, I think is important from the perspective of a soul friend because it provides us with much needed time to listen. Our world has cranked up the noise. And we use that noise often to block out the world, to reassure ourselves that we are in control by pumping up the volume, and to anesthetize ourselves from truly hearing. The soul friend would say, get rid of the earbuds and listen. When was the last time we heard the trees speak to us? Or listen to the silence of the stone as a previous speaker, the artist Rachel told us to listen. When did we last hear the messages between the words 
the breathing, the sighs from those who need our listening, the ones who love us and whom we love. The old model depicts le leaders who bark and bellow and bully and blast away based on the idea that louder is better. Pump up the volume. That only great power can do great deeds. But the quiet soul knows that the simple quiet acts from ordinary, everyday leaders keeps the cosmos turning, allows us to listen to the music of the spheres. The soul friend is one whose wisdom quietly hits the world with the force of a hint. Presence, the high and mighty lifted up hero leader has all too often stopped growing themselves. And when they assume power, they are no longer able to hear the truth. They stop being truly present. They become cliches of themselves. Napoleon becomes, alas, Napoleon. Skills bred into us by certain models of leadership often leave us disabled to exercise leadership beneficially, to grow in ways that power cannot produce and wealth cannot guarantee. True presence allows us to function as wounded healers without the expectation we have all the answers and quick remedies that we too often think our leaders should have. It's no flaw to be seen as vulnerable. It just means that you're human. The soul friend who is present to others, even their, during their own dark night of the soul. And joy. We can distinguish between joy and pleasure. Pleasure is about how we feel in and for ourselves. Joy takes at least two to share, to end joy, while avoiding the exploitation and domination of another. Our culture is bent so much on accumulating pleasure immediately, right now. Joy is slowly built. Friends build it together. A soul friend is one who sees the given world as a garland of joys, even the problems and obstacles, because we're in this together. And justice. The soul friend helps us see through the shabby ethos in which the unspoken and sometimes even spoken <coughs> creed is, it's not enough that you succeed. Someone must be seen to fail. Many leadership models have a preset goal to be the last one standing. That's a pretty empty stadium at the end of the day. Justice knows that no one is truly free until all are free. That there is no true liberty in a world of masters and slaves. The soul friend calls us to our better angels of justice. So silence, presence, joy, and justice. These are not descriptions of acts or qualities as much as they are descriptions of being, being a leader. A soul friend whose silence invites dialogue, whose presence beckons companionship, whose joy gives energy for the shared journey, whose sense of justice understands that be, to be truly human means that we acknowledge the dignity of every other person. Superpowers and models of leadership built on those ideas last, as it's been said, for maybe a hundred years. The spiritual power experienced with soul friends lasts from age to age. That power lets heart speak to heart, as in the words of the poet Mary Oliver. Just pay attention, then patch a few words together and don't try to make them elaborate. This isn't a contest, but the doorway into thanks and a silence in which another voice can speak. Slanja, health.